this week we're going to talk about something called baptism for the dead. Now, if you're Mormon or a former Mormon or you're trying to help someone who is a Mormon to understand, you know, the biblical conception of salvation, this is really important for you because Mormons, of course, believe that people who have died can have someone who's Mormon be baptized for them so they can be saved. And Joseph Smith gets this from 1 Corinthians 15, verse 29, where Paul writes this, If the dead will not be raised, then what point is there in people being baptized for those who are dead? Why do it unless the dead will someday rise again? Now, this is really confusing because, number one, it doesn't talk about baptism for the dead anywhere else. Sometimes we call that proxy baptism. It doesn't talk about that anywhere else in the Bible. It doesn't mention that anywhere else in history. We don't see any evidence of this being a thing that Christians did anywhere. So this is really kind of a confusing verse. And Mormons do it, and they point to this as a reason for it. And so we have to deal with it. So there are a few things that we can say for sure. Here's what we do know. There's a lot that we don't know, but there are three, three things that we do know. First of all, Mormons use this to teach works-based salvation. I don't mean that to be offensive. I'm just trying to show you the context of how Mormons and why Mormons use this. For the LDS Church, in order to truly be saved and, and eternally progress, you have to get baptized. It's one of the works that you have to do, or you'll sort of get stuck and you'll never be able to progress. And so naturally, for people who have died and never got to be baptized while they were here on earth, well, you know, they believe, Mormons believe that you can get baptized and that basically that that's, someone else can do that work for you to move you forward. But that's not a biblical concept. That actually goes against the biblical concept of salvation. And actually what Paul was doing here is he was talking about resurrection from the dead. He wasn't teaching, he isn't teaching in chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, anything about how we are saved. He addresses that in many of his other passages and letters, but that's not what he's talking about in this particular section of Scripture. And this is important. If you want to be faithful to God's Word, if you really want to have right teaching, then you need to take the context of the whole chapter, the whole Bible, right? You have to consider that, not just pull a Scripture out of context. Paul was talking here about resurrection from the dead. He wasn't talking about how we're saved. If we go back to that passage in verse 12, he says, But tell me this, since we preach that Christ rose from the dead, why are some of you saying there will be no resurrection of the dead? So in Paul's day, some people believed that we wouldn't have a bodily resurrection. And Paul is just simply trying to prove to them that there is such a thing as a bodily resurrection. And that's really important for us to believe because if there is no such thing as a bodily resurrection, then Jesus wasn't raised from the dead and our whole salvation falls apart because salvation is based on Christ's resurrection, not on our works. Now, apparently, some Corinthians got baptized for the dead. Apparently, this was a thing for at least some Corinthians. We don't know if they were Christians we don't know if it's some other side sect and he's just sort of trying to use that as a proof that that more people believe in baptism for the dead, this thing. We're not really sure. Nobody really knows. It's not in the history books. It's not mentioned anywhere else in scripture. But we have to admit, because of this verse, that apparently it was a thing for some people. And so Paul addresses it. He's not actually calling it out. He's not approving of it. He's not disproving of it. But what he's doing is he's appealing to that practice and he's saying, see, look, even these people believe that there's resurrection of the dead or they wouldn't do this practice, as obscure as it is. So that we can say. But look at what Paul says in Galatians chapter 1, another letter that he wrote. He said, Let God's curse fall on anyone, including us, or even an angel from heaven who preaches a different kind of good news than the one we preach to you. I'm showing you this because I want to remind you of how passionate Paul was anytime anyone threatened the gospel message that he preached. The gospel message, again, is this. It's really simple. Jesus died for our sins and our faith in him, and that alone can save us. Not any work that we do, not our baptism, not someone else getting baptized for us. So if there was any chance that what was going on in Corinth was threatening this basic gospel message, Paul clearly would have called them out on it. Apparently, whatever that practice was, 
wasn't that big of a deal. It wasn't threatening this basic fundamental truth that we are saved by grace through faith, period. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing anyone else can do for you to save you. And if you're a Mormon and you're really trying to wrestle with the biblical perspective on salvation, I hope you'll keep this in mind as you continue to pursue God.